Welcome to another episode of Gamer Heads. My name is Roger, aka Rogue Leader76. And along with me, we have Jake Studley Omelette talking. <laughs> and Matt. Also talking, <laughs> aka Zimbiote on the PlayStation Network and Steam and all the fun things. You know, I forgot what episode. This is 27, I think. Maybe. No, I think it is. We're so old, we don't remember. Yeah, yeah. We've passed. Once you're past your like 25s, you just don't yeah. know what age you are anyway. <laughs> That's it's true, so like, actually. Because you drink so much at 21. We don't yeah. have to keep track anymore. Yeah, it's exactly. just sad after yep. this point. Yep, yep. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, uh, guys. In a couple weeks, yeah, it's my birthday. Oh, I thought you were gonna be like, oh, it's the holidays. It is. Oh yeah, your your birthday is right next to Thanksgiving. <laughs> it, is, it? it is. Is it yeah. on sometimes, but not others? Yes. Oh, yeah, last okay. year it was on. This year it's not. So this year it's actually on a holiday, on Black Friday. Oh, I wish people made turkey for my <laughs> like birthday. Yeah. Like here, have a giant turkey. Yeah. Do you guys want to like go out to eat like mm-hmm. that week? Yes, birthday? let's go to Taco Bell. <laughs> no! Yes! <laughs> Taco Bell! I was thinking of like PJs maybe or something. Okay, I was thinking like Taco Bell. No, They've got no. chicken that's close <laughs> like, enough to turkey. We're not going Carve to some of that no. fake chicken off of off of uh, the chicken bone. Forget it. Forget yeah. it. Bad idea. <laughs> not going out to eat. Oh, like come that. on, man. Oh. We can get fried chicken chips. <laughs> it's close enough. It? I don't even know what that is. That sounds disgusting. I, I was like thinking it was a black tie event. We were gonna have some Moscow mules. That's to get what the we should m- do. Dress set. up and go to Taco oh. Bell. Oh, at that's, Taco Bell. That's oh. nice. Did I, I told you that story? What about how I dressed up in Hawaiian shirts? Right? No. Oh my god. <laughs> Maybe you have, but I'm sorry, wait, listeners. Wait, are probably wait. gonna hear it again. Yeah, is this a story or a lifestyle? Uh, both. Actually. Oh, no. <laughs> so uh, when I was in college. Uh, it was my friend's birthday, mm-hmm. and he wanted us all dress up. There was like eight of us, and he wanted us all dress up in Hawaiian shirts for his birthday. So we okay. went downtown, and what everybody does after their birthday when they go downtown, they go to Taco Bell, right? Yeah. So it was, we, you know, there was like eight or nine of us, and so we filled up pretty much all the dining area. Mm-hmm. So my girlfriend at the time was with me, but she was on another table with a bunch of other people. Mm-hmm. So it was just my roommate and I sitting at this table by ourselves, and we were just talking. And this guy and this other, these two guys sitting next to us, this one guy said to me, why are you guys wearing Hawaiian shirts? And I said, oh, it's my my friend's birthday, and he wanted us to wear Hawaiian shirts. And he interrupted me. He's like, it's because you guys are gay, isn't it? Oh, jeez. And my roommate got up, and he said, yes, we are. And he starts grinding up against me, and I'm laughing, and I'm crying so hard because it was the funniest thing. And he's like, I knew it. I knew it. And he got, like, so mad, and he like, stormed out of there. Yeah. Really angry. And his friend just sat there, and he looked at us. He's like, oh, sorry about my friend. You Back guys... to the chalupa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got a light for a cigarette? And we're like, no, dude. And then that's that's my story. But, wow. yeah. Hey, that's... disclaimer to the listeners. <laughs> it is not, in fact, like, absolutely for sure that after you go downtown for your birthday, that it's like Taco Bell. <laughs> no, you that's, do. That's a Wisconsin uh, thing, maybe. Nope. That's maybe even a Roger thing. Do you know why? Do you know why? Because it's the only place open except for... Topper's Pizza. Really? You, don't even, really? you like guys if, realize you don't have to do any of that? You can just go to Taco Bell? Because I do that. And again, <laughs> what I'm saying is I bet there's a lot of people listening that come from places that there's more open than Taco Bell. Oh. Yeah. Well, oh, not, yeah. Not true. here. It's <laughs> true. Point, that's, yeah. that's, that's the only... That's I, the only so I'm making night. the disclaimer. Yeah, no, it's more of a small point. town thing. Point. It's yeah. not like we're like, out of all the choices, we need to go to Taco Bell no matter what. We are the Taco Bell podcast. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Okay, so... Icebreaker today. Okay. I've got a good one. I've had this one in my head yeah? since we stopped recording last week. Oh. And this one, this one's for you, Jake. Okay. Oh. Because oh. I think you're going to enjoy this one better <laughs> than Roger. But I'm going to make Roger answer first. Uh-oh. See, that's how Sweet. it goes. Uh-oh. Suspense. Okay. This is how I build horror games. <laughs> make Roger go first. Because um, <laughs> it is truly scary. If you could, for... Like, let's say right now, mm-hmm. you could be granted every single game you would ever, like, want to own, mm-hmm. and you would just be given it without the option to hunt for it. Yeah. Would you take it, or would you rather hunt for games that you want to find? Oh. Uh, oh, this is hard, because <laughs> I think there is some fun in hunting for games. Yeah. But I don't like to spend money on games that are really, really expensive that are hard to find. 
Okay. So I will say I will take the games. Okay. So you'll yeah. You'll probably get a whole bunch. You get oh, you got so many Final Fantasies that sit on your shelf and you don't play them right now. Anyways, you basically have already taken the games. That's true. I just picked up Final Fantasy 15 from your store for twenty dollars, my friend. He hasn't played it. Not bad. Yeah, Yeah, that's about time. Yeah, that's a. He hasn't played it. (laughs) So I it came out in yet. February. And I also picked up Stardew Valley. <laughs> nice! <laughs> Although you never played that <laughs> I either. I never played that one either. What is that? And like I also picked up Harvest Level. Moon for PS4 uh, or something. Yeah, oh, what else did I pick up? Um, yeah, that... Okay, so I have a lot of games this week, okay? Yeah, so now you have every game you could ever want. Yeah, okay, yeah. See, that's perfect. Yeah. So you said you'd like the hunt, but you like to get games cheap. Yeah. But the reason to hunt is to get games cheap. You can find it. You can, like, go on eBay and be like, $300, Aquanauts Holiday. Yeah. Like, you know, you can totally do that. <laughs> I didn't quite understand that last like, What was most, that? <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's like... All right, so Aquanauts Holiday oh, used to okay, be the okay. Holy Grail. I'm trying to change the market. Okay. But this one, which a lot of people oh. do think is the Holy Grail, Grail now, okay, and okay, we're okay. going to be talking about that later. But the point is, like, yeah, yeah. it's like a two hundred to three hundred dollar game around the I holidays. Guess, you know, when people really want it. Well, I will say it's probably fun when you find those really expensive games really, really cheap. It's, and a Not lot even, with like ten other ones that are like of the same caliber for thirty dollars. Hell yeah! But you don't yeah. have any like joy in just finding a game, even if it's not cheap, and it's a game that you wanted. Because I did that with mm. Scooby Doo when I found it at your store <laughs> for Genesis. Because I looked for that game for years. Was that Unmasked yeah. or something? Uh, it's the one that there's like two games in it, and it's an adventure game. It's like a point and click thing. Sweet. And I was like typing to people online. They're like, you know, you can just go on eBay and buy it. I'm like, yeah, but that's not fun. Right? Yeah. Like, no, I mean, I do enjoy going. I mean, that's one of the things I enjoy. I just like going to your store and looking at your merchandise. Uh huh. And I mean, Turtles in Time, when I bought that from your store. Actually, that'll tie in nicely to yeah. the main main category we're going to have tonight, or the main hot yeah. topic, actually. Yeah. And the idea of going to like a physical store to like look at stuff. But, yeah. yeah. But I, I, I will you can say. You go it. online and buy it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I did enjoy finding Turtles in Time at your store, and I was like, oh my gosh. Because it did bring bra- that. Bring back memories mm-hmm. of when I actually bought that game because that was mm-hmm. one of the yeah. So I don't want to say it's the first game I bought, but it was, I certainly remember spe- uh, saving up my money and then driving to Kmart because that's where you bought video games when I was a kid. <laughs> so and bought, and bought Turtles in Time. So uh, that experience when you saw it out in the wild, you weren't expecting it, right? Yeah. Would you prefer that? To, like, you're in an in-search-of thread, and you say, I'm looking for Turtles in Time, so you're seeking it out, and then somebody says, I have a copy, I'll give it to you. Like, what feeling do you prefer? Well, I'm, I'm, by okay, the way, that's I'm a little bit different. The if, some, if, somebody, <laughs> if, I was, if I was, like, online, and somebody was just, hey, you're interested in this game, and by the way, people, if you want to, like, say <laughs> hand, nice. I'm okay with that, too. <laughs> but if they're like, hey, I hear you really like, you know, whatever game it is. Final Fantasy. I happen to have, like, every Final Fantasy game. Do you want me to send it to you? I'd be like, uh, hell yeah, I will take those games. Thank yeah. you very much. Ah, man. Yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely some satisfaction in that, too. Like, yeah. coordinating with someone that could be, like, yeah. potentially across the world. I mean, yeah. I, I would find that, you know, still more interesting than just here's every game like i'm if saying it's like, like a genie like just say snap their fingers yeah because i'm saying like any there. game you could ever like want in the yeah. future so like red okay. dead 2 or anything that would like come out oh, and uh, go might, like might, just might i say it. like it reminds me of the first time i realized i can have a small program on my phone to play every super nintendo game ever it took the fun out of it mm. like mm, if i think of it really? that way where all of a sudden it's like oh come on man is it more fun to play Super Nintendo on a Super Nintendo or Super Nintendo on a tablet emulated? Right. Yeah. I mean, yep. you know what I mean? Yep. And so, like, uh, and granted, even if it was kind of the same experience, it's just a small example of this question where it's like, I have access to the entire library. If I was asked that as a kid, like, would you like, act, what, would that really make you happy? I'd be like, my life would be changed forever. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, I was really excited played it for a little while and I was like it's not the same and that might be the same thing where it's like would I even really care about the games I have if they were just like ubiquitous like I don't know if you I, had ten thousand ROMs in a folder and you just double clicked one, you well, didn't care what it was. Yeah. You know, well, versus like so, like if you're being given different, a, being every given great like a game single... you ever wanted, isn't that the same thing? But that, but I mean, I, 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 it's I different than being get, being given like a single game as a you know child of the '90s and like here's your N64 game for the year, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, or for the se- next several months. Yeah, exactly. and that's why like those games held like so much it. mystery and stuff. Yeah, not only were you like a young kid like exploring, but you also like that was like. 
your mm. not your only game like because I was a spoiled kid so like I got a bunch of games but like <laughs> you know you get a game and you're like oh um, what is back in this corner and especially yeah. in the N64 days exactly. where they didn't yeah. fill the levels with things so there's like a lot of just janky corners that just went off into like dead <laughs> yeah. ends yeah. you're like there could be a secret back here and just or, one of those cases absolutely. where like you blow up a rock in like Zelda and then there's a hole there and you're like what is this and you go in the hole and it drops you down into like a fairy fountain or something like that in fact uh, I feel like I found so many more glitches and stuff. Not to say that they don't exist now. In fact, I feel like glitches and other patchable items are like more common because they can fix it, actually. So when you're talking about a final product on N64, we had that extra time to where, yeah, we so explored the level that we figured out everything, and then we even figured out weird exploits and, like, mm-hmm. you know, strange stuff, like infinite, like, I, I don't know. It's very interesting because I, I don't do that anymore. Now it's like yeah. I don't have enough time. I do not appreciate games today like I did in the day. I mean, I don't think yeah. any of us do. Yeah. I mean, we appreciate, like... I think we appreciate the industry and making of them and stuff more, but, yeah. like, the and actual the item. Because, like, when I play, like, a game, even if it's, like, a garbage game, some days I'll be, like, looking at it from, like, a developer perspective, like, I really wish I could even work on just, like, a garbage game, you know? Yeah. Someone had to have sit down and, like, put work into this, whether it's, like, a good game, like Last of Us, or it's whether it's, you know, Ride to Hell, Road to Redemption, or whatever yeah. that stupid yeah. game is called. <laughs> yeah. Um... Like, someone was sitting at a computer for hours and hours and hours programming and putting, like, all this work and and potentially thought into it. Yeah. So, like, you can appreciate that aspect, but, like, to appreciate every little piece in it, it's not the same. Mm-hmm. I mean, you play it to get through it for the most part when you get to the adult age. Yeah. yeah like Unless it, you're very casual about, like, puzzlers and stuff like that where you're just exactly. playing it to, like, get a high score or something. Movies, but. same thing. Like, it's, uh, it's more... um uh like taking out the trash like it comes in and it goes out uh yeah. you play a game you beat a game like i don't know how often i go back to a game to rebeat it like yeah. that's so yeah, rare but, but see but i do think that there is something about the fact that even if i beat a game um it depends on it depends if i it was a game that i bought and it was just like a you know a meaningless buy uh, I'll, I'll be likely to turn it in but if it was something like i got as a gift or i don't know we talked about this a little bit yeah. before but like if there's sentimental value behind the game, <clears throat> that then then I'm kind of like, oh, I I don't I don't want to just give. I that understand up. that I've had that in the past. I have that with my Wii. I think that's yeah. where it came up as I talked about it with my Wii. Yeah. The thing, like the thing of your point, Jake, is like lately I've found people on YouTube that their their interests are in movies and Blu-rays and Blu-ray collecting and stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. and that just blows my mind. I have because, a nice like, collection. As I a, like those. As a gamer, like physical media like a, a game lasts so much longer to than a movie yeah. to me yeah. so to have like and there's so many like to me there's way more movies than there are video games maybe yeah, that's in, an incorrect statement but i feel like no that's i think that probably that's probably true. true yeah it's true um, i mean unless you're calling it indie games but so I mean, like, physical games i think yeah. right so to like go and just buy movies watch it for two hours and then set it on a shelf and then like your shelf is just co- like and it's sucks. It's, it's it, much more useless to me than like a game or something. Unless unless but I guess you can go back to both. So mm-hmm. well, it unless depends, you have yeah. like friends over and you're like, hey, you want to see a really great movie and like, like yeah. that's your thing, you yeah. know? I mean, like like you host people over to watch movies. And then... you know what I did after watching these darn YouTubers? I went out and I bought a movie. <laughs> yeah, nice. what movie do you have? Uh, I Actually, I do know. Uh it comes at night. Yeah. The oh, cool. Horror a thriller movie. Dude, thing. you'd really like my collection of South Korean horror films. Like, you know, oh, yeah, that yeah cool. like uh, Wong. Oh, man, who's the dude who did Old Boy? And Oh, is it James Wan? Wait, I was just getting on a personal Wan. thing. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah, so like, there mm, are certain yeah. ones that have like that art house feel, or uh, I don't know, I guess everybody's within their rights to collect, I guess. It doesn't even matter if you use it. I mean, yeah. I mean, did that's, people really trade baseball cards, which were called trading cards, technically? That's no. The thing. That's the amazing yeah. thing about, to me, about, like, YouTube, is that, like, there's a there's a YouTube subculture for collecting whatever you want to look up. It's, yeah. It's out <laughs> there. Like, books is a thing yeah. that most people would be like, why are you collecting books? You can just get, like, a Kindle and, like, yeah. a bajillion books on, like, 
A little, yeah. yeah. Yep. Well, it's like um, my my niece collects LOL dolls. Uh, what is that? Don't even I know, don't know. Don't tell me. I don't want to start collecting. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to. You'll yeah. Just come in here and instead of my Mario figures. Exactly. Yeah, like, we're oh, opening God. up a whole can. I, will, I pawn them all for LOL dolls. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh God, I would I would cry. Amiibos, pop figures, like you know, we can. Yeah. Oh, that's a Pandora's yeah, box. Um, that will tie into some of the news today too. Okay. So well, speaking of which, I suppose. That was a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good question. <laughs> yeah. You know, I kind of changed my mind now. Why? I think I would like to go hunt the you stuff. You go hunt down. the stuff down? Yeah, I mean, because there, there, there is it. something about the There's fun that, yeah. of finding yeah, that's it. that's why we're I in mean, it. if you don't yeah. find it, it's incredibly disappointing. Yeah. But if you do <laughs> find it, it's like you're hey, on the What's the, the game? Silent Hill 2? Is that the game you're yeah. looking for? Yeah. 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 If I ever find that game... For PS2, told, though. I know, I know. If I ever find it... could be for Xbox, original Xbox, but... I'm going to buy it for you. Don't do that. <laughs> you uh, that. Why? Dude, I feel so guilty I haven't used the mug you bought for me, but I oh. really appreciate it. Oh, okay. I really oh, yeah. do. And I look okay. at it all the time, but I don't want to like make it bad. Oh. So now I'm in this like limbo where I, I make it bad. it's sentimental, so I don't want to use it. I want to keep it yeah. in the box. Oh, I see. What would you prefer? I don't care. Really? No, I actually would rather you use it. Use it? Yeah, All because right. then it lights up. You know, it's cool. Nice. Yeah. Okay, okay, there yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, uh, so let's move on to what's cool or unique that came into... I don't even want to say your store anymore. No, nope, it really is my own stuff okay. now. And I, cool I, or unique that came into Jake's collection. I got a cool trade with the dude in Australia, actually, part of the hunt. Okay. I traded one of these bad boys. I think I brought them up in the past. Yes, the Pixel yes. Junk 3-in-1s. Yep. Have you ever oh, the three seen ones. it, yeah, actually? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. So he was looking for that and saw on one of the forums that I had it. And he was like, like, what do you want, basically? And he said he had an English version of The Last Guy, which is really sweet. Oh, it's, it's, really? It's no Lost in Rain. But yeah, exactly. So it's it was one of the free fun. games Wait, on um, this PlayStation. Is the English version? It is, actually. It's, it's all, yeah, it's I know. It's all in, like, Japanese on the back. So the wait, 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 wait. What, is it a good game? Have oh, you played Korean. this game? That's like this this is, or no, I have the English version. What? I thought I had the Japanese version of this game. That looks like I haven't Russian. I popped it in, dude. Okay, so then I also have this import. It's a, like a short piece playoff. Um, short piece? It, on the back, it's got it like, is, it's mostly a visual novel, actually. This doesn't look oh. like the English version, Jake. It really is it's the Korean. English version. It looks Korean. Yep. Exactly. Every th- every game that's Korean basically has English subtitles and everything Strange. like that. Oh, yeah. Weird. I have that game. But the Those... Japanese games they like never include it. The last guy was a free game on the PlayStation plus a couple well, that's, for PS. I think it started as a download title, so that's why oh. I'm sure this collect this version is probably worth more or something because it's a physical version. Exactly. Physical yeah, versions. and that's the thing. All of these games actually are were way cheaper digitally, obviously. Ooh, directed by Suda fifty one. Yeah, dude, exactly. Nice. That? And that, that's the Ronko Sukagami's Longest Day. It's oh, just like, it's yeah, just, yeah, I've heard of this game. Yeah, exactly. It's a, uh, what do you call it, the Infinite Runner? Um, yeah, Infinite Runner. Like, like a, a Mario. Oh, like. Yeah. Like the Mario Run? Yeah, what is, Infinite Runner. Is it? Uh, okay, yeah. Well, so, yeah, kind of. But right. it's not or, infinite, uh, though, but. Right, yeah. Uh, right, it forces you to run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, it's, yeah, like Kid Trip. Runner. But yeah, they, like they, play, trip, yeah. they play into it. It's like demons chasing you or something crazy like that. And like there's like different levels. It's great It game. looks like great Princess Mononoke kind of. Mononoke? Yeah, Mononoke. Like, Mononoke. <laughs> it's a really cool <laughs> yeah. story too. And like, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just like a really neat pickup. I, I remember playing it digitally and I was like, oh, there's a physical version. So mm-hmm. now I'm kind of like opening it up now that I have the PS3 collection. Yeah. It's like I'm going to snipe some of the more like cool collectible like rarities. And so I love Doctor Who. Oh, and so what? I got the Eternity This is a clock. game? Yeah, dude. Oh. Yep, and it's actually pretty cool. It's like modeled like after Matt Smith and the real that must show. That must have been a pretty late game yeah. on that system for Matt Smith. 2013 stuff, maybe? Wasn't it? Uh, or 20, Matt, 2012. 2012. Oh, I didn't realize Matt Smith was that old as Doctor Who. No. I never watched like Doctor Who though. I watched well, the very really suppose, really old ones with the guy with the scarf. Capaldi's yeah. been around for a while now, three years at least. So oh, okay. I don't. Yeah. I I would. I really kind of. So the thing with Doctor Who, I really want to get into that series, but it seems like I don't know where to jump in. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> probably the second Doctor. Second uh, of the modern is that part. the guy with the scarf? So David Tennant, you could skip oh, the Tennant. first one you if mean you want. Purple Man? 
But David Tennant, who? that's like really. Well I know who Dan- David Tennant is, but what's Purple Man? Oh, you guys haven't seen uh, Jessica Jones then? Never mind. Oh no, but yeah, he's in that. Yeah, he is. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. Yeah, yes. yeah, just hey, cool imports. So, I know last time I don't know if we mentioned this on the podcast, but you mentioned it to me. You talked about limited run games. Is that a thing or no? Uh, we're in the works for it. I can cool. say it. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, uh, we're talking with them. Did you, did I tell you this yet? Uh, yeah, you, yeah. Kind of. Right. Yeah. I don't remember exactly so, what it was. So like for those that are familiar, they had like make these like limited runs yeah. <laughs> of games and then they're exclusive to like their online website and they actually partnered. I probably have like 10 at least publicly known, uh, you know, partnerships with like different people in different states, uh, physical local retailers and i'm talking with their uh manager of the kind of the retail side of things to carry those games at gaming That's generations awesome. See, actually that i'm super excited about <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm wouldn't super it be amazing it. if i was like jake give them my game and then they were yeah. like yep let's yeah, yeah, do yeah, it, let's do it. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh oh, yeah. <laughs> like, awesome. all the connections coming from this podcast yeah. Yeah. and then roger would buy what? it yeah <laughs> yeah exactly and put I, it on I, shelf and play play. I hate <laughs> to throw you a curveball but they just signed some switch titles and they're reshifting oh, yeah. their focus to more yeah i saw that larger like generally weird? accepted games, but still don't have physical releases. It is kind of weird, but then you have like your odd worlds in certain games where it's like eh, it makes sense, and they're not oversaturating um, the market. I feel like mm-hmm. there's a lot of games that are released for twenty five, thirty dollars that are even going for less than that now. For all the games that do double, triple their value, they want to make sure that they keep it a collectible kind of um, right. thing. Yeah. And like, I'm not, I don't mean to speak on their behalf, but they definitely publicly stated that they're shifting their focus. Well, you, you could tell because those... like, it was really rare that they would come out with anything. And then after a while, it was like every month or something, they were like, here's a new game coming out. And yeah. then it was yeah. like, yeah, okay. Or it was like two games every month or something like that. There was like a lot of stuff coming out recently. Like there were even like, it, for some people trying to get every game, three or four different releases in yeah. one week. Yeah, wow. you know, That's so crazy. like there were weeks that even just me collecting PS4, I had to spend more than two hundred dollars because there was three games and I had to get mm. the collector's edition or whatever. Sure. And if I didn't have like you know the the eBay business or whatever, like it wouldn't even happen. Start to have games, you know, yeah. like yeah. that's that's literally what that's for is so I can like have fun collectibles. Otherwise, there's no way you could keep up with a whole collection. But again, mm. they're kind of suiting to that now. They're chilling it out a little bit, and mm. I think good things ahead. Yeah, cool. nice. Speaking of Odd World. Actually, I'm trying to get their community manager on our show. So, B, if you're listening. Whoa! Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> Talking about those connections, huh? Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and actually, you could maybe get uh, one of the lead artists. So, Brett, if you're listening. <laughs> nice. <laughs> guys got to get on our show. I miss Brett. <laughs> yeah. No. Not that Brett. Not that Oh, Brett. yeah. He does not draw for uh, for Odd World. I'll tell you that. Oh, okay. I got you. I don't know, man. He's, yeah, he's, he's got connections, too. So... Yeah. Uh, Matt, speaking of game dev. Yeah. Let's go to the game dev corner. Do I have to actually get in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> oh. We're going to move then. <laughs> hey guys, um, how's it going? It's just. Oh, like, oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it's what's his name's desk from Office Space, like downstairs in the corner yeah, yeah, of the closet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, well, we're already downstairs, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dev room is basically a closet, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, That's I don't know, there's a lot of stuff I worked on, <laughs> like, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, but I'll just, like, generally glaze over it. Um. Your game I, jam! I released my game jam. Yeah. Which is called... It's called Company Man, but no one understands that it's called that. It's yeah. just called... It looks like it's just called Company, company but yeah. it's stylized, so man kind of yeah, sticks stands out. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that came out. There's a bunch of YouTube videos about people playing it. And I shared some. I watched one of them. It's it's funny when you make a game that is supposed to be about you working yes. in, in a monotonous job wow. and and like breaking convention to like get out of it. Speaking yeah. of office space. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But the problem is like half the players don't try to break out yeah, of it. They just so do weird. the monotonous job. <laughs> Like the, the one I watched today, like he did a great playthrough, but he, you, what you do is you push this ball basically into a hole, a colored ball into the corresponding colored hole. And he did it for 10 minutes, just pushing a ball into a hole. Another ball drops down, push a ball into the hole, like for 10 minutes yeah. until I was like, 
please, I hope you figure out <laughs> soon because I can tell you're just like struggling to figure out what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like, this is incredible. Yes. What a study. So I've probably yeah. watched like 20 or 30 minutes of people just pushing a colored ball into a hole like obediently. Yeah. <laughs> not like not like trying to break away, but – yeah. That's yeah. interesting. What an interesting study on 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 humans, the human yeah. psyche, though. Well, that's yeah. the that's the thing. Like uh, with Nightlight, when I released it, you start in a, a bedroom, and then immediately to above it, there's another bedroom. Not a, there's not a single important thing in that bedroom. Every single person that plays the game though comes out of the door and goes straight into that bedroom. Mm. Everyone that plays this starts putting the balls into the hole because there's like a tutorial that shows you. Okay, this one yeah. goes into this hole and stuff. And then it says escape on, yeah. on one of the holes because it's supposed to be like a portal style where someone wrote, hey, you need to escape. And they look at that word that says escape and they look at the hole in front of them and then they just jump and they try and go forward. <laughs> and there's an invisible wall there. So they can't go, but they're always like, boop, and they hit it. And they're like, oh, every time. <laughs> this is awesome. So like That's you totally hilarious. like. That's and then crazy. there's like points where someone will be like playing the game. And some people will have, like, commentary, the way they'll talk while they're doing it. Some people won't. And there's a part where, like, a gun has to shoot. You have to you have to disobey yeah. by putting the ball in the wrong colored hole. The company shoots a bullet at you, and then you're supposed to run towards the door that, like, you can't get out of. And then the bullet hits the door and opens your way out. You made your, like, escape. But there's, like, people who play it and, like, the thing hits them. And they're like, that's weird. And then it hits them again. And they're like, that's weird. And then, like, and then they're, like, walking and, like, trying to figure out what to do. And then they look at the, like, the grate that the door grate that it's supposed to hit. Yeah. And then they look at the gun. And then they look at the door grate. And then they push the one in the wrong hole. And then they do it. And they're like, yeah, you figured it out. Nice, dude. That's perfect it's design, awesome. though. Yeah. It's Where kinda... you, there's this predictable thing. Like, you force them to think outside of the box, even yeah. though it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, there's really, there's yeah. nothing else you can do. So, like, it's like yeah, it's kind of interesting. Three-dimensional it's... riddles. Because really, yeah, seriously, it's, I it's mean. It's kind of like psychology, if, essentially. If you really. played that game just putting the balls, the color balls in the right box, it's ser- seriously super boring. It is. It's, <laughs> in, it's extremely boring. So if you're doing a Let's Play of that game. <laughs> There's a certain point where you're just going to want to start screwing up because it's going to get real boring after that point um, because it never ends. It just infinitely repeats. So, yeah. And the funny part is, like, I think the, the one that I saw, you could tell that he, um, he you know, he made a mistake because the ball bounced out and went to the wrong hole. Yep. And then, and then it was like, oh, oh. Yeah. That does something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Well, I mean, yeah. it, like... No, I mean, like, he didn't realize yeah. that he did it. Yeah. Like, oh, that's so cool. Isn't that, I just think that was such a funny thing that it was like, then he was like, wait a minute. So the first time it was kind of like, maybe I don't want to do that again. And then it happened again. And then all of a sudden they started pushing it into the wrong one on, on purpose. Yeah. I thought it was really fascinating. You can tell that they changed, like, the way they're, they're playing. It's It's weird. It's weird when you, like, you build it a certain way and you, like, watch someone, like, learn it. You yeah. know? It's like, yeah, it's, like yeah. it's gotta be like having Favorite kids out that's assume. so exciting. So? Like, I would imagine your kids, you watch them sometimes, like, figure something oh, out. Oh, yeah. Like, that's yeah. incredible. That really it's probably is like incredible. a box with, like, different shaped holes on it, and that's <laughs> yeah. basically what I build is that box. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I finished that, and then I worked on Knock a bunch. Um, Good. Stuff like inventory and combining inventory, like in the Resident Evil, the old games, stuff like that. Cool. So, yeah. Nice. Cool. Yeah, and then did you want to talk about uh, your friends game? Which one? Oh yeah, so um, a buddy of mine, uh, Brad is his name. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, I know him by his like nickname in our Discord chat. Yeah, <laughs> but pretty it's Brad, um, Brad or Bradley, and uh, his game just came out this week. Actually, his game just came out today um, slash last night. He's in the UK, so. Uh, it's called Ru- Ruya, R-U-Y-A. It's a uh, mobile um, puzzler game on iOS right now. It's coming to Android later, um, I believe. Uh, but it came out. It's climbing the charts pretty well for the first day it's out. So it's a dollar, and it's got, like, I think it's, f- like, f- oh, man, like eight worlds or something mm. and then i think there's like eight to ten levels per world so i mean there's quite a bit of like content in it yeah sweet but it's pretty 
solid. You know, I kind of pick up games and I look at them as a programmer and I'm like, does this feel janky at all? And it feels yeah. like really solid. They've been taking it to expos all over the place and like play testing it and showing it off and stuff. So definitely check it out if you have an iOS device. And he's, we're going to try to get him on our show. Yeah. That'd be cool. That yep. really would be. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's the one of the programmers on the team. I'd have to check their team like credits to see who else is on there, but I don't think it's a very big team at all. Yeah, it looks really cool. It, lo- it reminds me um, a bit of like, um, well, it's a puzzler game, so it's yeah. like some somewhat like, um, uh, like I don't know the best way to s- describe it, like uh, like um, it's Tetris like- versus mixed with um, like those uh, what is the one of the what was the game that was really popular with the balls that you would kind of drop them down and stuff like that, like um, Bejeweled, Bejeweled, kind of. It's kind of like a Bejeweled or kind of like a Candy Crush, but. You're not swapping yeah. like places. You're matching like symbols and, and then patterns you, yeah. and patterns, and you have like different um, ways to like. If you're stuck, you can you can drop a different color in and stuff to like help you and stuff. The way I describe it, unique. it's like it's very calming. When yeah. you touch the thing. screen, things happen. Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, <laughs> you can really even nice. tap. Wait, wait. I mean, I'm, I'm you know, that's joking. actually like half the games. Actually, there's, <laughs> there's, there's yeah. a lot of little detail where other than the like play area where you're like playing with the like the whatever they are that you're matching, they're like yeah. little characters. You can like tap on little places of the screen and little things will like wiggle or jiggle cool. or like make a noise and yeah. stuff. So there's like Neat. little little details like little here. It is quite there. artistic. Yeah. Is that original music too? I believe so. The music is amazing. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. I, so, someone else, one of my other friends, immediately said, "Did they do their own music for that?" Because, <laughs> like, that's the first thing like so many people have said. Yeah. Other than the the art style is very unique, and the you know, just the gameplay of it. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of Celestial T. I don't mm. know if you people know that, that art style. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, I don't oh, know. Okay. It's just that was such a hippie thing for me to say. <laughs> I guess I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just throw that in there. And then I guess. Uh, I can all, I can casually touch on it, but I went down to Flip Fly oh, yeah. a week ago, which is the company down in Madison that they made Race the Sun, and uh, the absolute, one of your favorite games, absolute right? drift port and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Absolute yeah. Zen, that drift game or whatever. Yep. Absolute no way, drift. that was a limited run release. Yeah. That the. They oh, the, they're so cool! They did the PS4. <laughs> you told port. me that too, because now I remember yeah. being this excited. That yeah. was awesome. Yeah, it was cool. I went down there and showed them some knock stuff, and they gave me a lot of good pointers, and I saw some of the stuff they're on. And oh, a oh, cool. like sneak peek of stuff that isn't out yet. Yeah, I think if you're in the area, they've taken it to different little events and and had people like look at it and stuff. But mm-hmm. I don't think they've made any formal announcements or anything. Way so. cool that they hosted you, man. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty it was nice. Really cool. They just moved into a, a little new office, so like I went, you know, they said, "Hey, if you're in the area, come on down and look it up." <laughs> I mean, I'm not exactly in the area. <laughs> yeah, but I, like, I came down. I checked you're it like, out. I'll be there uh, when you want me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's only like a. Two hour drive. Yeah, it's, not that like, far. it's not too bad. No, that I was really, a crappy day out. So I really good. appreciate their work, man. I really yeah. do. So yeah. that's cool. Yeah. yeah, it was cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Nice. Uh, well, good. Thanks. Thanks for sharing, Matt. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the Gamerheads News Flash. The Gamerheads News Flash. In case you cared. In case you cared. Yeah, maybe we should change it to that. Uh, so, so, a couple things okay. that, that we have for the news. Yeah. One, last week Friday was a, so when you hear this podcast, it'll probably be two Fridays ago. Mm-hmm. But last week Friday was uh, pretty crazy for game releases. Why? Uh, you had... Uh, uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Oh, okay. You I had... didn't know that game came out. Yeah, the game came out Friday. <laughs> like, I knew it was coming. Yeah, you I didn't had... know it hadn't made it. <laughs> Wolfenstein or Wolfenstein. Oh, yeah. That right. surprised me because I didn't realize it's that was coming Wolfenstein. out. Wolfenstein. Yeah. Is it Wolfenstein? <laughs> Wolfenstein. Yeah, but then it's Dos. Oh. That's how you say two in German. Dos? Yep. No. Yes. Stas. Dos. Okay. And then... Uh... <laughs> And then, uh, and then uh, the other game. What uh, there was a game called um, Mario Odyssey. Yeah, it sounds like an indie game. Yeah, yeah. Boo. Yeah, hope they, hope they do well. Uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> oh god. 
So okay. when that game came out, though, uh, you read a review, and I, I wanted I wanted to talk about that review on the podcast. Actually. Yes. Well, so I didn't read the review, um, but I heard of the review. Okay. Um, I didn't need to read the review. Yeah. <laughs> but if you're not sure what we're talking about, I don't know the publication. Do you? No. Yeah. I, I don't know who it was. It probably wasn't anyone, like, majorly no. like, influential. Yeah. But someone gave it a 6 out of 5, which is, like... Yeah. Impossible? Right. Like, On a scale of one to five, I give you a six. Yeah, I mean, like, if you're going to say the game is really good, don't do that. Yeah. Because it totally, yeah. like, it, t- it takes you, your credential yeah, and just throws say, it in the trash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you lost any credibility in fact, you had. It, in fact, it made me, like, look at, like, games reviews in general, just being a cynic, yeah. and be like, hmm... That's the place we're at now, huh? And that's actually uh, a future episode we'll be talking about game yeah. reviews. <laughs> and, then, okay. and then I'm not going to go super into detail because I don't know all the events of this, but like uh, Jim Sterling, the you know independent games critic we bring up sometimes, yeah, um, supposedly brought up uh, that he was going to give the game a 7 out of 10 or something like that yeah. as a joke. Yeah. And he got like waves of hate from Nintendo fans who were, like, throwing all these accusations at him for giving a lower score than, like, a perfect 10, basically. And I think part of it stems from, I think, when uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild came out, I think he was one of, like, the, air quote, lower scores. Yeah. You know, he was, like, a 7 or 8 out of 10, whereas sure. everyone else was, like, oh, perfect 10, perfect not or 9 out of 10 or whatever. Yeah. So he was one of the considered lower scores, and I think there was a big hubbub about it because he brought it down like a single point on Metacritic or whatever. Um, and then, like you know, he joked about Mario Odyssey and just got the the wrath of the Nintendo fan base. So wow, it's very strange times for yeah. those Nintendo reviews. <laughs> yeah, well, the the one that was that gave it the six out of five, there was a comment on that one that said, um, it's not the game mechanics, it's the fact that it's Mario that gives oh, yeah. it a six out of five. I think right? that was the mm, I don't know who it was. I would I think it was maybe the Ars Technica review or some mm. some but that yeah, means that one Hotel of the... Mario should be a, a a six out of five then. Yeah, yeah. One of the re- yeah that that review is very weird. I mean that that review did have good points about like this is why the game is good. Yeah. But at the end they're like, if if anything, just kind of throw out the rest of the review and it's Mario, so you know it's amazing. It's yeah. like yeah, uh, okay, no, no, I'll, no, yeah. I'm sure it's that a very amazing. good game. Yeah. But like it, we're not looking at the game here. We're looking at how the review is written, and yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if there were a handful of critics that were like, "Well, it's a Mario game. Let's give it a perfect ten, so one, Nintendo fans don't come and hate on us. Yeah. Two, maybe we get some more traffic because we promote that we've given something a perfect ten. Yeah, you know, because there's a lot of places that gave it a perfect ten. Yeah, I'm sure the game is amazing because the last Mario game, that cat suit one, yeah, was really good, and this one's got looks like more game design. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although I, I I've been listening to a couple podcasts changes I should say and um and there was a couple of people that said you know still Galaxy is my favorite Mario game even over Odyssey Ugh. yeah I was Ugh. surprised to hear that but some people have said that yeah uh, I've seen I only saw two but they were two game devs one of them is a decently like known indie dev and both of them said they tried it and they just couldn't get into it so really? it's really you know hmm. however you take that game you know? yeah. I mean, that's how it is for all games. That's why I don't listen to reviews as much. Yeah. but <laughs> Unless it's, it's YouTube people pushing a ball around for yeah, 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear listen, anything. Yeah. Listen to them. Oh, that's cool. um, yeah, no, it was interesting because, I mean, it was a really big day. I felt like I, I don't remember a day like that really ever before where they had like three big games come out in one day. That's it's been pretty a while. crazy. Yeah. There's going to be two on the 17th this month. What's what's the two? Uh, well, the the rehashes of the Pokemon's. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, the Sun and Moon. Sun, moon yep. Ultra and then moon. Battlefront two. So I mean, that's oh, kind of a yeah. big and, night. And and pub. In case you care, yeah. PUBG is also coming out. PUBG. Yep. But PUBG. But you know that's code in case. It is not a physical copy. Yeah. Mm. It's it's like a Marvel versus Capcom two on PS three. Yeah. Well, and and to side note. I mean, we, I mean, it's, I didn't. I, mean, I wasn't going to bring this up in in the news, but we can talk about it. Is the fact that um, the game's kind of getting a a little bit of a I don't want to say hate, but people are kind of like, eh, they're falling off the bandwagon. PUBG, on that game. yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
Well, I think partly is because there's still it's riddled with bugs yet. I mean, they fixed some bugs, but it's stale. It's getting stale, and that's what people are complaining about. That they have to fix some bugs, but it's stale. And I think they're focusing on the console version, so they probably like lost focus. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm I'm sure that company wanted to strike while the iron was hot with yeah. Microsoft coming and going. Hey, we'll give you a whole bunch of money if you come to E3 and say you're going to be on our console. Yeah, I'm sure. You know. I, I'm sure Microsoft weighed the fact that it's not a fully like functional game, but yeah, I don't think they cared much no. if there's hype behind it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, interesting. I don't know. Um, I like I said, I played uh, Fortnite Battle Royale. I just can't get into that game, so I, I don't think PUBG is for me. Man, yeah, and that's so crazy, especially trying to cross platforms where if you're not like Grand Theft Auto Five online or something like that, like you. Uh, or an MMORPG, like, yeah. you can't expect to be, like, or even, like, maybe a Minecraft, which isn't online, but still something that over years, like, you can jump platforms or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. when you're talking these online-only games, like, uh, I think of physical copies of Lawbreakers and Absolver and yeah. stuff like that, where it's, like... Yeah, Absolver's by actually the time, getting a limited run, I think. Yeah, but by yeah. the time that stuff ships, I mean, like, when I got Lawbreakers, everybody was done. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When, and, and, um... Yeah. It, this is I kind of the same thing. I think everybody was done with that game not, when it came out the next day. Right? So. But, mm-hmm. you know, it's not that, not that, not to say that, um, this is the same case where it's going physical, but the point is, like, time has gone by, and now all of a sudden there's going to be this re-release. Yeah. And they're expecting people to jump on, but, like... That I think that's going to be something that comes and goes in regards to those online games, like having a place. Like they might show up on the digital realm or whatever, but even then, it better come at launch. Otherwise, like it's going to be lost. It's going to be lost in all the other releases and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's It'll hard to believe that Call of Duty comes out today and half the people that play PUBG aren't going to like be like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, speaking of Xbox, they said no more Connect. Yep. They stopped producing they them? They stopped producing them. Yeah. So they're going to sell whatever they have. Okay. That's, yeah, I, th- okay. I actually thought, that, <laughs> yeah, I thought they were done. You thought they were done? Oh, no. They were still making them up to Sideshow Bob is in the side with like a uh, slide whistle. It's like, <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. That's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone yeah. kind of knew. That yeah. is interesting yeah. because I, I didn't know that. That's why I'm surprised that they're still official... making them. Wait, what? Exactly. <laughs> now yeah. we can actually put something on the, uh, the, the gravestone, you yeah, know, right. like a yep. date. Yep. <laughs> yep. Speaking yeah. of gravestones and dates, <laughs> Lego Dimensions is also uh, shutting its uh, doors. And, <laughs> yep, yeah. Again, again, yeah, that <laughs> grave was already built. They were just waiting to etch in the date. No, see, that's so weird to me because that didn't come out that long ago. No, but, but again, yeah. another example where... I don't know, it was, it was a while. Really? How long? Well, it was probably about as long as that... Uh, that uh, Disney one? No, that's no, the thing. Disney was before that, and that's this was going to be my point. Dead. Yeah, too. Disney exactly. Dead. Yeah. So what was it first? Skylanders. Skylanders, Skylanders. and that then is not Infinity. dead. Yeah, it's yeah, not dead, yeah. but it's pretty dead. <laughs> yeah. You know, it might be one of those things where the like the market's only thirty three percent of what it used to be, and sixty six percent of the market left. So they might be all right. You know right, what I mean? Maybe. Where yeah. like they end up selling the same yeah, amount yeah. anyway. But um. Um, yeah, generally speaking, again, it goes in line with the other thing I was talking about. Lego Dimensions tried to get on board when it was already too late. I yeah, mean, yeah. it would be like me like buying a whole bunch of those fidget spinners right now. I'd be like, yeah. everybody's yeah. really into that. Yeah. I should get yeah. into that. Yeah. We should sell those. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's probably not going to work no, out. No, you're probably right. That's probably a bad investment. <laughs> um, but you know what's interesting? I heard this analysis about this that, um, you know, uh, uh, Nintendo obviously has their their um their toys too their their toys their amiibos their amiibos, but the difference be- between that and these other games is that the amiibos are not necessary to play the games. Bingo, and they're more of a collector's item. Where these other things like Disney Infinity and Legos, like you needed those things to actually play. Yeah, they're integrated into yeah. the game. I would say the amiibos probably, even though I don't know how I'm basing this on anything. Probably are geared more towards a larger age range. Yeah. Because, like, older people who grew up playing Mario are going to buy them, whereas, like, they're going to look at, like, a Skylander or, like, I guess maybe some of the Disney stuff would, like, be interesting. But you kind of have to be, like, a Disney head person to, like, be into that stuff. Whereas Nintendo, if you're a gamer, which is what that medium is, like, you're going to understand what some of those characters are and probably 
want some of that. Sure. If, if you want that type of well, I mean, I look around. Thing. I look around your room and all the amiibos that you have, and I mean, I have amiibos for characters I don't even care about. Yeah. I got a Sonic one over there. Yeah. You know the last I, Sonic game I played? Probably Sonic and Knuckles <laughs> when I was like, jeez, ten. But some of these amiibos, I didn't even know that they were amiibos. That's crazy. Like, how'd, you, how'd you have the foresight? That's the perfect cutoff. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's what it's yeah. true. Yeah, it's, I guess they came out with no, the Dreamcast kinda, with that first level. That was good. You know, the sad thing is, like, I've been watching things where people are talking about how Sonic has gone downhill, and I see those games, I'm like, I kind of want to try those games. <laughs> like, I just want to see, like, yeah. what they're like. Yeah. I want to see how bad Sonic they are. Sonic Generations. I was really excited. I was like, I'll get, I'll get on board. And I was like, nope, that's exactly... I, why did I think I was any better? Or, yeah, that's or, how yeah. every like, every year... I know better than them. Every year, the Sonic fan base is like, oh, yes! It's and happening they, this yeah, month, they, man. Yep, this is it. This, yep. this yep. one. This is the one. Yeah. This, is, this is the do or die, though. And then it this comes month, out they're coming out with like, one. No, oh, no, no, Sonic Forces. Sonic Forces. Yeah, yeah that's like next week or something, dude. Sounds yeah, no, bad. It, it funny. sounds like a bad game. It <laughs> sounds like Boom. Yeah, it Remember does. Boom. It does. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, is that no, uh, nobody does. That's the <laughs> point. Dang it. I, I follow. I follow the uh, the editor in chief at, at uh, Push Square, and he <laughs> he had this uh, article, and it was a little trolly about about uh, Sonic Forces, and oh my god, the. The hate that he got. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, it was so ridiculous. And then I said to him, like, oh, oh man. No, good. Like, good. I tried to stick it up for you guys. And and he's just like, yeah, well, you know, in their defense, I was kind of like well, egging them on. The but, thing is, yeah. like, if you troll so- <laughs> Sonic, that's like, that's like seriously finding the slow kid in class and making fun of him. You know what I mean? Like, they're what? like, they're trying really hard to like stay relevant and it's their last chance. And like, if you respect it's an easy, them enough, easy like, target. Yeah. Quotes, I'm going to say, yeah. You know. Okay. you know, like it's gone I'm not on long say enough. That like, I align with that. that same sorry. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to, yeah. I mean, that's a weird metaphor, Jake. No, but, but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Like, I, I, so, I know, I know to the point where it's almost offensive. Like I just was, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah, no, I, I understand. It's like, it's Sonic's hasn't been in a position of, of grandeur for quite some time. Uh, let's say yeah. let's say the last the last Sonic game that came out was that like Mario Odyssey. Did it get a six out of five? No, the last one it was probably got a six out of like a thousand. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. The last one was um, wasn't it the Sonic Generations? Wasn't that the last? I mean, no, it probably was Boom Shattered Ice or something. No, like that. no, there was like Generations. Like generations. Oh, on PS3. Yeah, yeah. It was that yeah. One no PS4. No, it was, it was the was one fun. they were going back no. to the original. Yeah, no, side this was made by um thing. a guy that was made by. <clears throat> PS4. On. It wasn't on PS4. Sonic yes, Generations. I swear to God, there was, one that, there was one that just came out. I yeah. Thought. Yes, one that just came out, and it was made by a guy that um, he was making this game on his own, and then and then um, and then they came to him and said, "Hey, uh, why don't you actually make the game for us?" Because I think, yeah, you're you're looking it up, right? Oh uh, yeah, but I never get service in oh, here. Oh okay. But... Well, I'll look it up. <laughs> but um, I know. Yeah, Boom was like Wii U time period. Yeah, I'm gonna I feel get, like that came on I'm the 3DS. I'm gonna get too. Sonic Boom on the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, just okay. roost for every underdog There's I two. can. There's yeah. literally two. There's two. There's one called Shattered Ice as well. It's 2011. Oh, yeah. Sonic Generations is 2011. No, not one? Generations. There's no. a different one. What was the one that came out on the PS4 recently? Um. So, anyways, to get back on topic. Yeah. What was the topic? Uh. That these well, th- th- these games are are um, that amiibos are still uh, rel. I-, I don't know Sonic if they're relevant, Mania. but th- I think it was it. a bit- Sonic Mania. Sonic Mania. That's what it was. Yeah. Good one. Yeah. Sorry. That's true. I forgot about that. I was that, really excited because uh, it yeah. was a collector's edition physical, but then again, it was code in box. Um, Dang it. But- oh, Sonic was added as a playable character in Lego Dimensions in November 2016. Way to get on that one, Sonic. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Nice. Well, that's what I'm Not fast enough, they were... Sonic. Oh. <laughs> they, were, uh, they were late to the last Toys to Life game. I mean, come on, Sonic. Yeah. But but, I mean, that's Gotta what I'm saying fast. is that I feel like they were still like coming up with like new sets for Legos. Now, I will say the Lego Dimensions uh, Dimensions was was probably pretty expensive for parents to be like, I don't know if I can fork off that kind of money. I, I never looked at it, but Legos were always expensive. In well, general. yeah, that's the, that's the problem. That it's really a Lego set you're buying. Yeah, and like you know, so you buy the. 
it, now I think it's like sixty, but I think when it came out it was a hundred bucks. Wow. The Lego Dimensions, like the big base. Oh yeah, the yeah big that's right. Base that's set. Right. Maybe it's fifty now. <clears throat> Is it? Yeah, it, it, and I think it came down because of the fact that they're saying eh, we're we're canceling it. You should call. You should call your next villain Lego Dimenich. Yeah, you should. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you awesome. should. Yeah. Um, and, and then each set, I mean, depending on what set you bought, but like you could buy a set for thirty dollars, you could buy a set for five or six dollars. You know, like I don't know. I mean, I bought, I bought one. I don't have the game, but I bought one set just because it was Hermione and uh, and Buckbeak, and and my daughter loves Harry Potter mm-hmm. and she loves Hermione, so I just bought. It was like on clearance because, like, again, they're trying to get rid of this stuff. Yeah, that's the problem. So I bought it really cheap, and she thinks it's an amazing Lego set. But I'm like, that's not what it's made for. Yeah. But, you know, maybe maybe uh, with Amiibos, you know, Nintendo had it right saying, like, it's not necessary for the game. But like you said, um, it's a collector's item and, and people from all ages, whether you're right. older or younger. So now that really it's into it. dying, now watch for it to drop in price. So if you want to buy some of that stuff. Yeah, and that's what I did with um, Snag it up. Uh, Disney Infinity. I have probably like That's what a lot of 30. people did for, yeah, Disney Infinity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's harder now. It's harder to find some Disney Infinity. I can't find them anymore. But yeah. I wish I'd bought. I bought a lot of Star Wars one when when they went on sale when that clearance. So. Smart. That's yeah. that's stuff that you know, people want. Yeah. Uh, and then the PlayStation Paris event. Yeah. So there was a bunch of game stuff. That was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> some, yeah. some some announcements of games, right, and more trailers. Yeah, uh, another Last uh, of Us two. Yeah, trailer. I wouldn't say an announcements oh, of games because it feel like there was anything <laughs> new, perhaps. Or it's, was uh, if there was, it was some more of the, like the indie stuff that yeah. I didn't know was coming out. Anyways, yeah. there's some like a cool drawing game where you're like a graffiti artist. I think that's a VR game. Mm-hmm. A lot of VR stuff. Though. Yeah, there nice. was a lot of focus on trying to push. Hey, we got more VR stuff coming. Oh, and the other thing was that uh, PlayStation Plus members will get into the beta. I think starting next week uh, for the um, Monster Hunter Worlds game. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Didn't know that. Yeah, nice. so it's gonna last for two weeks. I and think you can play as what's her name? Alloy. Alloy? Oh, really? Whatever her name in, is in Monster Hunter. I think so. Oh, that's that's sweet. Yeah. Um. So, uh, and then so it was funny because. It was like they almost had like this, and they said this. I, I felt like they said this at the at the event. They said that you know we're really gonna like focus on PlayStation Plus. It's gonna be amazing. Like all you people are gonna really love it. And then this November release, I'm like, what? What Nintendo? Yeah. Oh, Nintendo? What PlayStation? The next month's games aren't the greatest, no. but I'll probably like them then, huh? Uh, Maybe. Bound. Yeah, yeah that sounds fun. Some That's like great things. indie. Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm all about uh, that. Yeah. Worms, there's a Worms game. In fact, worms. when you think about... Uh, worms is like the big one. Yeah, yeah Worms is the big one. Yeah. Like WMD or whatever? I don't know. No, I don't remember which one it was. Well, it was... Um, you know, about the VR thing, that's the approach you need to take. Like is is like give it to the uh, up and coming people who think outside of the box because we need to figure out what the full potential of VR is. We yeah. can't just hand it to these big AAA people and then be like, make the game, but in VR. That's yeah. not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. So that's neat. I don't know. My yeah. Yeah. It's nice to see that they're continuing to like support it. Yeah. Because like the big deal was like, is was Sony going to support it after the first year? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, by the way, I don't think we brought it up on a different podcast, but a couple of weeks ago they announced that there's a new version yes. kind of there's and a little like retooling of the yes. headset there's like earbuds or something yeah it makes it a little bit less cords yeah they changed <laughs> some part of it yeah and, and like the the like headphones or whatever wrap around the ears or something now basically they looked at what like vibe and stuff has and they just kind of implemented Compton, something yeah. like that yeah cool that's all i had for news anybody have anything else nope all right well let's take a break here and when we come back then we'll, we'll talk about our hot topic this week we'll be right back Hey Gamerheads, follow us on our Twitch channel. You can find us at Gamerheads Podcast. And on Wednesday nights, we're going to be doing live gaming events. Join us for some banter and watch me, Roger, get his butt kicked at video games. That's Gamerheads Podcast on Twitch. So you've been listening to our podcast, and you've been thinking, you know what? I can do that. Yeah, you can. 
You can go through Podbean, our affiliate, and you can get one month free by going to podbean.com slash ghpc. Podbean is what we use to host our podcast as well. On Podbean, you can host your podcast, and you can publish it there. It's actually quite simple to use. Again, to get one month free, you can go to podbean.com slash ghpc. That stands for Gamerheads Podcast. All right, thanks everyone, and back to the show. Welcome back to Gamerheads, and tonight our hot topic is how... Yeah. It's like audience. Yeah. Like it's a drum roll. Yeah. Jake and I go... How video game real t- <laughs> retailers are struggling to find their identity. Are they? Oh, no. How they are? Well, are they? Okay. I, I'm saying they are. Okay. But... Explain. Maybe so, a video game retailer... <laughs> a video game retailer? No, I'm saying there's more than one. And and I'm going to start with one. This is the reason I came up with this topic. So GameStop recently came out with a new program. Well, it's not out yet. I think it's available sometime in November, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so it's going to be a program where you pay $60 for six months, <laughs> and then you can rent as many used games as you want, and then the last game that you have after the six months you get to keep. Nah, you get to pick actually oh really yep and then that way they'll save money because the last game they have is probably a newer one but yep you get to actually pick out of all the games you rented which game you want to keep interesting so i guess okay uh first of all it sounds cool Mm -hmm. but i can't imagine unless it's going to be online i can't imagine how a store could have so many copies of you know whatever Do they do they already have like a, a distribution online thing, GameStop? No, I mean that's, you can. That's GameFly that does yeah, all that Game stuff, Fly. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. all the rentals and stuff, and Redbox or whatever. Yeah, but I think this is just another mm-hmm. sign that uh, game retailers, and I'm not I'm not saying your store necessarily. You know, uh, but I'm saying that there are some game retail retailers that are struggling with finding their identity because I think they're they're struggling with Amazon. I do. I think that Amazon. It's taking away, I think, digital what? sales, yes. No? They're leasing, the, the leasing is the wrong person, dude. If they if they have the, um... What? If they have the database to, like, keep track of everybody, what they should do is take games like God of War and games like, um, uh, even Sonic and stuff, right? Not really multiplayer-based, but still games that people want to keep. So it's uh-huh. worth $60. They play it in a week and they beat it. They should lease it back to GameStop. So they lend it to GameStop to then rent out or whatever, but then they get it back after six months. So you get like 20 bucks, but then you actually get your game back. <laughs> Dude, because then they can turn around and then re-rent that out like for more than the $20. I guess. Yeah, I don't know if I'd sign up for that. I Wait, wouldn't. no, 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 no. You still just rent games and stuff. What I'm saying is, like, it, so instead of selling your game forever, you just say, I'm not going to play this for, like, another year. I want to keep it, but I'm not going to play it anytime soon, so I might as well just, like, give it to these guys yeah. to in turn no, rent same. it out. I would never do that. I would never do that because some... some you won't get even the same copy Some back. jerk. Well, yeah, exactly. What copy am I going to get back? Well, one that works. Cop- still one, one that, that works. One that works, yeah. That the box is all totally chewed up by a dog and it has <laughs> Cheeto. I'd, anyways. I'm, I'll, I'll do it. my own idea then and you don't yeah. have to be a part of it. I'm not going to be a part of it. <laughs> okay. No, but, but anyway. Yeah, So sorry. my point is that I think they're struggling to find their identity. And then and then you go into other stores like Best Buy. So I'm, and, and, and GameStop has this problem too. Like... Best Buy, at least on our store, maybe other stores are better, but you walk in. Uh, our it, store is garbage. It is garbage. <laughs> like, their video game section is, like, picked over. It looks terrible. Oh, it's, it's getting better. It actually used to be worse. What do, you, what do you mean by, like, identity? Explain that. Well, I think well, that, um, so it used to be a place, like, I remember when I worked at Best Buy, um, and even before I worked at Best back Buy. Back in my day. Back in my day. <laughs> um, like, you'd walk through the media, and it was, it was you know, you walk through the media section for video games, and really that's all it was, was just straight up video games, and they had demos, and it was amazing. I, I loved it. And now I walk through, and it's like, like, here we have an end cap full of, like, Minecraft toys. Yes, of mm-hmm. toys. And then here's another one of, of, like, wallets, and here's another one of socks. You know and, why? 
can't buy those digitally. Yeah. Yeah, that's my point. What? That I think that they're struggling with. They're like, well, what can we get people to come in and buy at our store? That stuff's cool, though. I like that stuff. It is cool, but I don't know. That's that's the thing. I think, in fact, they're actually creating an identity, whereas back in the day, they were like a a video store or a bookstore or anything. It's like, we sell this. It's a form of media, and people ingest it. And now they're actually creating like a gamer culture. Now it's like the gamer lifestyle. Right. right. It's like it's like when you'd go into a video game store back in the day. Like your store has this too. I mean, your store has like a lot of like plushies and stuff too. But your store right by where you exit, there's those little things of like Nintendo mints or yeah. whatever. Those mm-hmm. little like rando boxes and the little like metal boxes filled with a candy or something. Mm-hmm. Or in the past it'd be like the container that would have balls, if you know what balls is yeah. the like the energy drink. Yeah. And it was like notorious at lands. And, 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 and like then that. you used to have um duff beer actually there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like that stuff that was the stuff that was always like on the side but like that it wasn't popular. It wasn't all over the place. Where that stuff is becoming like the popular stuff and the games are just going digitally. So like they're they're creating these like inner stores to sell that like merchandise, basically. And it's yeah. not sustainable when you consider like PlayStation Now. I think it's I think it's less sustainable to sell merchandise because I think merchandise to most people is probably more uh, more what's more optional than buying a video game. And and sorry, I yes. just wanted to give context. PlayStation Now being the digital rental service. Not yeah. PlayStation like nowadays, but yeah. like if you can already pay money to basically download play anything or stream play anything yeah. you yeah. want, like why would you give them And again, like oh, I don't know, it does well, look you have bad. Gamefly too. See, now I'm not worried about gaming generations personally yeah. because my thought is like um <clears throat> kind of like what we talked about before actually where if the market is like 50% of what it was 10 years ago, but a juggernaut like GameStop's gone. Or I think of Blockbuster and then yeah. the, and then Family Video, right? Yeah. So yeah. Blockbuster, 5,000 stores shut down. It's the end of physical media as we know it. No, it was just too much. Yeah. They grew bigger than it, the, that market could sustain itself, so somebody had to go. Mm-hmm. It, so it's not going to go away forever. Oh. Some, and that's why I say maybe a store is losing their identity but like that's because they're not giving customers what they want like where are their collectible games nobody will go no collector goes to GameStop to get their collectible games used because it's gonna like not even have a case you know what i mean so like there are niche markets that they don't know yeah 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 Yeah. Yeah. you know and i think i think that's the thing i think that uh that's what i was talking about like i think that your store is very much like we know what our what our base is right it's collectible uh, and it's 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 not just collectible items that you can buy because you can certainly buy collectible items like plushies. It's also all of them, not just but, the ones that make us money, but all of them. If you want yes. it, like we'll have it. Yes, but it's also games. I mean, like the games that you guys have, like you'll have a couple games that don't have cases, but for the majority of the time, ninety nine percent. Yeah, I was thinking of some of your three DS games and DS games. Sure, that's literally it. Cart only. Cart only. Yeah. yeah. Which I, we had this discussion. I think it's weird that people are like toss the carts and just you know or t- toss the 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 cart sh- or the the packaging. I should say. And why would they do that more for cartridges yeah, than a disc or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it's strange. Um, but my point is that uh, that people go to your store knowing that hey, I'm gonna I'm looking for a specific game, and like oh, this is a collectibles item, right? Like a lot of your games are, you know, a lot of retro games. You have new games, obviously too, but the games that you get there are going to be in good condition. They're going to obviously work. And and a lot of times, like, people buy stuff there and, like, I'm not opening this because this is a collector's item. Our goal is not to, like, increase profits from the quarter before, year over. Yeah. Like, our goal is to, like, figure out what the heck it is that the gamers want. Yeah. Like, we're so not worried about some of the stuff that they have to worry about. And, again, so if a mega corporation is declining, it might be because they pay too many middle managers. Yeah. It might be as simple mm-hmm. as that, where they're spending so much money on middle management, they need to find other avenues of revenue. I don't know? think gamers really care, like, what store they go to necessarily based on... I mean, maybe it's based on some of the content in the store. Like, obviously, your store has more than our local Best Buy because... Our local Best Buy is a smaller one than, like, one that's 30, mi- 30 miles away. To the yeah, north. I mean, our 4K yeah. TV collection, yeah. insane. But, no. like, like, uh, but your store also has better prices. Yeah. You know, you know. I mean, I mean, new is new, but, I mean, you, you still have, like, 
couple dollars off some of the new stuff that they don't have off at, at other stores. Yeah. But anyways, my point is, if you remember back in the day, there was this thing called Game Crazy, and they were attached to Hollywood videos. Yes. And when you go in there, there was like chain link fence all yes. over the place and really weird bright colors and Did, stuff. Yeah, bright green. And that yes. was an identity. And that place died so hard. <laughs> but that's probably because Hollywood Video died. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that's because of the reason you're saying, not because of the identity. No one went there because, like, oh, yeah, I love going to the place with the chains on the walls and the mi- I Minecraft going there. merch. I liked going there not because of the merch. Exactly. But because they had, like, unique... They reminded because me a of lot what of... they had. They the, had what you wanted. Yeah, they that's had, like, all that old... Matters. I remember walking in there and, like, I bought uh, Pokemon, Pokemon Blue, for four ninety nine from them. <laughs> like... But they had like all of, they were really bad at price in their games actually. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they were. Uh, but they had like a lot of old stuff there that like I couldn't find anywhere else, and they yeah. and it was really cheap. Uh, but I think part of it was like like you said uh, with Family Video is that they would um, Family Video does this too. Where they take their games and they just like liquidate them. They're just like, well, we don't want to rent. We're not going to rent this game anymore. Like they felt that they made their money on it. So they'll liquidate games that are supposed to be like, you know, in the market $50 and liquidate but them see, for like 10 You kept going there because of the prices. Yeah. Because of the, the competitive prices and some of the selection. Yeah. You didn't go because of like the store layout or... No. I don't care. Well, or, no. or what the store was selling like off, you know, to the side of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know, like if Best Buy sells the same games that your your place sells, like I'm not gonna have like big deal about going to that store and buying it over your store. Like, yeah, that's not unless I'm really for like supporting local businesses and stuff, that's which true. I mean is definitely a thing I should be going for. But Dude, like, if there's no benefit to me as a consumer, like why why exactly. would I prefer that's one store thing, or the other? So I, if so if I go to Best Buy versus Target or something, and Target's got like a dollar off, maybe I'll go just buy it from Target instead, and then bingo. the next game I'll go buy from Best Buy. Like I'm not like. A Did loyal it? customer to one. I know, but I but the, that's why they keep trying to do like what you're saying is by like more so the uh, like gamers clubs and stuff. Yeah, we're like, oh, come swipe your card, you'll get an extra like ten percent off, you know, pre-orders or whatever yeah. that yeah. stuff is. I I, I think uh, I'm sorry to make one co- comment and then I'll let you jump in, Jake. No, sorry, okay. um, but one thing that I I I feel like when I walk into Best Buy. Uh, in somewhat with Target, but not not as bad. But like the selection is terrible <clears throat> for games. Not well, actually, Target selection I think is not very good either. And it just seems like it's like an afterthought. Like, eh, I guess we have to sell video games because you know yeah. that's what people do. Sometimes they come to our store buy video. I don't know. It just seems weird to me. Like, like that's because they're not selling to you. They're selling to the people that go to Target to buy other things. Yeah, I guess. That's true. That's why the only the only thing I check out at Target is if you go to the end of the aisle around the back, there's like yeah. a clearance rack. And yeah. I put that in very heavy <laughs> yeah, air quotes yeah, yeah. because <laughs> not many of those games are very good deals. <laughs> yeah, you, and, and you clearance there is to, not very much of a clearance. Yeah, you kind of have to go there when you when they have an overloaded amount of a certain game. Like yes. they had that. Uh, oh, that game's coming out uh, for free too. The um, Until Dawn Rush of Blood yep. roller yep. coaster mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. So they had that one there, like, they had, like, 20 copies, so they were, like, yeah. $5 a piece. Yeah. Like, obviously, that's, like, a better yeah. deal than I went there the other day, and they had, like, I don't know, it was, like, Halo or something for, like, 20 bucks. And I was like, yeah, okay, yeah. sweet, that game's how many years <laughs> yeah. old now? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. That's the thing of it, too. Again, physical locations, uh, brick and mortar, <sighs> online does it better because they figure out what you want. Yeah. That's what it's about. It's not about... Who like it's not about people prefer buying online. We're human beings. We like to do stuff. We're not just like sitting on a couch connected to a machine. Most of us, most of us aren't that yet. Anyway. So you'd rather hunt for it uh-huh. than just get it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. You know, actually, you know, because like I do feel well, like um, uh, now that we're talking about it, I do feel like the hunt now too. Like because because one thing I will appreciate about your store and the thing that I don't like about GameStop and other stores like that is because. I'll walk into your store, and if somebody has something, like, unique, like a unique copy or unique um, collector's item of it, right, you're like, yeah, we'll buy that, and then, you know, obviously sell it, um, and I can find those unique things. Like, you go into GameStop, and you're like, hey, I have this unique copy of, you know, whatever it is, yeah, and they're like, well, we, what are we going to do with that? Pay whatever. Yep. Yeah, We're not going to buy that. that. Yeah, they don't have room. Where, you know, they don't have room, and they, and they don't want to sell it. Like, Plus, the, you, have, you have to have your own... Um, 
judgment, you know, and like yeah. well, they have to yeah. follow rules. But I mean, um, like that one Wii game that you have that's like the hundred and twenty dollar Wii game. Is it the Kirby one? No. Oh. What's that one that Dokapon Kingdom. Yeah, Dokapon Kingdom. You would never find that at GameStop. Never. Because of the fact that it's so expensive and mm-hmm. then they they would have a hard time flipping it. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, so they're like, like no five bucks be... and yeah. then nobody will be hit. Yeah. yeah. You know, and so like I know there's a number of people who are thinking like no matter what you say, like like online. Online is where it's going, like there's you guys are just it's futile. And then I think of like Amazon buying wholesale foods. I yeah. think of like Zappos having physical retail locations and like basically they're going to end up taking over what used to be there and just do it more efficiently because they know what we want. Yeah. Again, it really comes down to that. And like, if yeah. you really cared about your customers and you were willing to change and you were willing to adapt and stuff, instead of like always being like, I'm swinging against the stream and complaining a lot. It's like, no, no, just adapt, adjust. Well, do you think that this um, program that GameStop's doing, this rental program, do you think one, uh, it's there, do you think it's going to, do you think it's what gamers want? And two, do you think it would be uh, something that's going to basically pull them out of any slump that they're in right now? Because I feel like they're in a slump. It's a cash infusion for quarter four. Yeah. I mean, they're in a slump, but they're still, like, making bank. Exactly. Yeah. And I think think it's something that, in my mind, would appeal to a younger crowd. Um, Maybe that's just because when I was a younger person, I rented more games than when I was an adult. Yeah. So, like... To me, it'd be like a person coming in there and renting a game for their kid is a better value for them than buying a single game. And I, f- I feel like that would be for a kid who's got maybe a shorter attention span or something where you'd too, want multiple $60 games. Sixty dollars down. Yeah, that's sixty dollars down. That, that's asking a lot. I mean, that's like that's yeah, but that's also like that's a game too. I know. So but like you're saying. either getting sixty dollars down for one game or sixty dollars down for a selection of games where at some point you can say I want. Possibly this game or whatever selection they that you pick from. Yeah, no, I I get that. I mean, and I agree with you, but still, like, there's a difference between like if I if I I understand the end goal is that you're going to own like own a game at the end of that, um, but if you're not really up with the program itself, right? Like, I think it would be hard to say, oh, I'm going to pay $60 for a subscription for something for six months. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, I mean... I know it's, it's only $10 a month. I know it's... On, I mean, I know that's... Yeah, I guess... Cheap, I mean, yeah. But it's, it's the reason why... another subscription. Why uh, one month, three month, and one year subscriptions exist, and yeah. you pay more if you get less at a time or whatever, and again, like, I, I understand... But if you think about the kind of people who want to try before they buy or they want they go to GameStop to get the used versions instead of going to like a big box store, Best Buy, Walmart, mm-hmm. whatever, like that should say something then that probably your customers don't want to put 60 bucks down. I, 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 that's just me personally, but I really wonder even like they've never really focused on new games or anything like that. So like it, their bread and butter customer can't be the kind of person who drops 60 bucks on a new game. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. I really feel like they can't make enough money off of the used games, which means their business is doing something wrong. There's plenty of people buying and selling them. Mm-hmm. Well, and here's, here's the other thing that... Um... And I don't know if this is every GameStop, but this is another example to me. I think that they're struggling to find their identity. Is that now they sell phones there, cricket phones? Yeah, yeah. like that's so weird to me. Like I understand. I guess like gamers obviously need phones. I, I really do think we turn this into a, a critique on GameStop, though. No, it's I don't mean. It, I don't mean. Like I think the mom and pa stores, like they're yeah. fine right now. No, I don't mean to be a critique of any store in particular. I'm just saying, like, I think. Outside of your store, because I do feel like your store knows its identity. I do. I think that you guys know what um, you are. No? Not always. Really? It sells fidget spinners. Well, Not anymore. I mean, for a yeah. while. But not I mean, anymore. Not, not You're that experimenting not, not with our... Not That's what I'm saying, though. You were just experimenting. <laughs> like, it's not... That's, that has, like, nothing to do with gamers yeah. other than the fact that it's targeting an age range that you're assuming a gamer is in. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this is like your fault specifically, but I'm just saying like stores try stuff to see what sells and if it sells they're going to keep it in there regardless of if it like follows whatever model they're going for. And like money is money at the end of the day for for a company, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like if you guys start selling like um, and like that... women's cardigans, and they just fly <laughs> off the shelves for some reason. <laughs> like, 
right, like, right, wow, right. we sold a lot of Final Fantasy 15 copies to Roger this we, this week, <laughs> and, and 15 women's cardigans. Yeah, yeah. We should probably get some more cardigans because yeah. those things are going like crazy. Yeah, yeah. It makes sense. But and then like if, you're gonna you're gonna make the like. Sorry to cut you off, but no, you're going to make I like the traditional off. gamers like mad then, yeah. yeah. Bingo, but, and that's the thing. We're seeing a lot of changes right now with GameStop, right? They're changing their products all the time, and a lot of these businesses are. And that's where you know maybe they're not sticking with what works. And that's the other thing. They see they see some report on how used game sales are slumping, and they think, all right, let's ditch used games and look elsewhere. No, what you have to do is figure out how to increase used game sales. Yeah. That's the point. Like, your mm-hmm, GameStop. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't become Go Hastings and try to get a whole bunch of comic books and, oh, who's Go Hastings? That's right. They're not in business anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, I mean, cause... That's, like, that's like, have you ever gone to, sorry, I'm cutting <laughs> no, you off. Too. Have you ever gone to, like, Staples? <laughs> you know, Staples has a food aisle. Like, what? Yeah, there's a food aisle in Staples. What? Isn't that the weirdest thing? It's like I do not walk into a Staples like, to buy food. Like, like it's like stuff you get at like you'd have at your desk, I, I suppose. Oh, okay. Combos yeah, yeah. and like okay. Doritos oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and okay, snack okay, foods okay. and stuff. But <laughs> there's like about, yeah. you like walk down. There's like briefcases, folders, <laughs> yeah. chairs, yeah, yeah. and food. Yeah, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> well, but it, it must sell because <laughs> they've always got it there. Well, it's a whole aisle. <laughs> it's the other. The only thing that always makes me laugh too, and this is going off topic a little bit, but uh, at our dollar store, yeah, uh, or Dollar Tree, I should say, because Dollar Store is different than Dollar Tree. Okay, our Dollar Tree, you can buy you can buy steaks at our Dollar Tree for a dollar, and there I think those, who is buying steaks from the Dollar Tree? There's a there's actually a YouTube channel I think where I watched the guy eat one of those. Oh God, that sounds <laughs> terrible. Yeah, but but you know going back to to the to this you know fighting your identity so um <laughs> i mean you walk into into gamestop and like their merchandise so at least in target you walk in and like they'll have shirts and sweaters and like i actually almost picked up a stocking cap today cuz it yeah. had luigi is a luigi stocking cap i'm like oh that looks really cool right yeah um, but it's all game related, but you walk into GameStop and it's like Batman and Wolverine and Superman and not saying that, that I don't think that's cool. Cause I'm a comic book nerd myself, yeah. but I'm thinking to myself, I don't, I don't necessarily think, oh, I'm going to go to GameStop to buy exactly. a superhero shirt. Yeah. But I'm, I also don't feel like I would go to Best Buy to buy game toys. And I find like that to be one of the coolest places to find game toys nowadays. Really? Yeah, have you have you seen the stuff they've got there? It's cool. Target does it too. Man, it is crazy. But it's it's like building up. It's like it's almost like the merchandising they had back in the like heyday of Super Mario Brothers, like one and three mm-hmm. and stuff in the NES era. Yeah. Where like they were just like pardon my language, but whoring out the Mario Brothers <laughs> license to yeah. like everyone. Yeah. And it's getting to that point, like again, it's not just going to everyone, but there's a lot of merchandise for Bethesda's got their whole like a whole little mm-hmm. chunk of area at Target. Yeah. That's where I got that thing. Yeah. Isn't that from. awesome? Yeah. Dude, and it's cool. Like, it's, there's all these like yeah, little bottle game heads. related. I I have no problem with. Yeah, I think it's that's all cool. like this is a recurring theme where it's like you know what gaming is getting that traction. They are being comparable to the the big box hit where you got to sell the Star Wars T-shirts and figurines sure, with the yeah. movie. It's yeah. finally happening where they're. And that's the thing, like, so there are, again, there's a place for it, but if you sell video games, then that's what you should do. Not to say, again, you're talking to a dude who runs video game stores, and he does other stuff than just sells video games. But that has to be your forte. Yeah. You can't, you can't mm-hmm. water it down to the point where it's like, right. oh yeah, there's eBay and Amazon. Why would I even go to GameStop when there's yeah. all that other stuff? Because yeah. that's what they're doing to their customers who just want to go there and buy Basically some games. Basically, like muddling yeah. their message, mm-hmm. essentially. Yeah, and so that that's where I do agree with well, the general point, I guess. And 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 like you know, the other thing is like I go into a GameStop and I ask them if they have, you know, a certain game, and they're like, "Oh, we're never going to get that game." <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> it's too it's too rare. We we won't order that game. <laughs> I just look at them like this is like the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever heard you guys you, say. You understand I'd buy that from yeah. you. Yeah, and that's what, like... that's what I said. And and then their response was, I, they said, well, uh, you can buy it online. And I said, yeah, I did buy a copy online. I wanted to get my wife a copy. And I wanted to buy a physical. So, you know, I, I don't think this is a game that she's going to play forever. And then she can sell it if she doesn't really like it anyway. And he's like, well, you could just have her play your game. And I was like, 
Okay, I could do that too. Thanks for like not even trying to get a sale from me, right? And right. It's so yeah. weird. It was like problem solving, but not in the the way that a company would problem solve. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, you know, and, and just the response of, "Well, never gonna get that game because it's too rare, and nobody wants to buy that game." Yeah. And like that's just a weird. That's a weird thing because like you're a game store, and I even pointed out, I'm like, well, you have other NIS games here. Like, mm-hmm. you know, the publisher. Like, you have other games that they publish. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, Wicked Fate Ultimatum, it just sells. And yours yeah. doesn't. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. Tales of Grace is F. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, that's Namco, but you still get that. Yeah. 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 It's, well, then he tried to sell me on, like, um, other games. I haven't Other gone games. into one of those stores in, like, years. I went yeah. to one today on my way you back. You did? I had to go to the bathroom in Fond du Lac. There's oh, a Wisconsin Lac, yeah. town for you. Yeah. Yeah. Fond du Lac. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, you're, uh, you're in my home area, actually. Yeah, yeah, pretty close. Yep, I went over Yep, to Sheboygan. There's another one yeah, for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for you yeah. all. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, there was just the GameStop and the little thing. And I went in there and um, it, I, I, I went in there. Yeah, yeah, at the end of the day, I don't like dislike going in there yeah i mean i kind of do that's why i don't go <laughs> yeah but i mean if i have to i'll go like mm-hmm. if i'm trying to find a game on like release day maybe and some other but you won't find it again <laughs> that's why you'll go there yeah it's right. because they might have a game you want that's gamestop yeah yep yeah. i mean we're not we're in a position too where we're not like that's our only game store in town right? yeah there's some cases where that's like your only that's like it. local yep. Big game store other than maybe like a Best Buy or like, yeah. you know, a Walmart. Walmart or something, you know. They yeah. they are the mom and pop shop of the local area. That's another thing it's where it's company. like maybe yeah. they don't need to rent out games. Maybe they need to change the way that they do things in particular markets. It could be that mm-hmm. simple, you know, yeah. where it's like, oh, we got to drop the pricing in these towns where we're the only option because otherwise they're going to go online. We can't yeah. just do our, what I don't know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Anyway, well, I thought that was an interesting discussion. Indeed. Um, so Indubitably. If you want to Without us, a doubt. If you want to tell us what you think, uh, you can reach out to us. Uh, we are on Twitter, so we're at GamerHeadsPC. You can email us at GamerHeadsPodcast, or GamerHeadsPodcast at gmail.com. You can Facebook us at G- uh, GamerHeadsPodcast. Yeah, I think that might be the only way you can get all this. <laughs> uh, let's go around the room and talk about what games we're playing, and then uh, we'll wrap it up with how people can get a hold of you. Me. Well, I'll start with you, Matt. Okay. Uh, what am I playing? Yeah. Let's start with um, that I have been replaying The Evil Within. Oh, um, I yeah. bought the first one uh, for Xbox One, so I've played it previously on PS4, so now I can get like some of the achievements again. Replay it because I bought... Evil Within 2 yeah. for PS4, both of these from your store. Um, and I've been playing basically just the first one. I don't think I've been playing much else uh, since then because I've been doing dev and stuff. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that takes some... Oh, and Ruya. I mean, I've yeah. played a lot of that today, Yeah, actually. so I can't wait for that the game come out on Android because I can see myself playing a lot of that game, actually. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, cool. so I guess I guess that's... I feel like there's more stuff. But I've also been in in the in the method of like installing a ton of stuff lately and then not starting any of yeah. it because I don't want to like start it and then not touch it. Yeah, um, I don't know what that's like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy. You guys, you guys really should look look up Rogue, Le- Rogue Leader seventy six. Rogue Leader seventy six. Yeah. Yes, and look at his trophies. It's fun. It's like yeah. it's like, like almost w- all of the trophies or none of the trophies. 1%. Very similar to me. That's actually. how I, that's how a lot of people are. Yeah, think, though that's yeah. how I am. I'm not a tro- I will say this. I'm not a trophy hunter. Oh, uh, yeah. I I I look at him like oh I should hunt these trophies and then I just don't. Yeah, me too. Jake, what are you playing? Um. Well, I could I could tell you about this time I played the hell out of what was it Sega Mega Collection and I played like the first level of every game in it because I was trophy hunting. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no, but recently it's all only South Park. I there, I downloaded this twin stick shooter, but I can't even remember the name. It wasn't as good as some of the other ones Peggle. I've been playing lately. <laughs> Little Peggle here and there, yeah. dabble, but man, that South Park game, I swear to goodness, now I'm like 16 hours plus into it. Yeah. So I think the last time I talked to you, I was only 10 hours. Yeah. So I only played six hours in two weeks. That's only. pretty weak sauce, actually. Yeah, but for me, you know, that's, that's yeah. actually, that's like, yeah, half an hour. And you're, are you, you're enjoying it a lot. Thoroughly, man. Yeah. It's so fun. It's like fun. And, and I did... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's just it's so bad because they there's literally they just say it the way it is or whatever I guess. And there's this like the hardest mode is if you if you make your skin color black. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I'm playing through the hardest mode. Oh, I didn't know what game you were talking about there for a second. South Park. Yeah. South Park. Oh, yeah. I didn't I didn't catch you say no. the name of it. I was like, what? <laughs> No, yeah. yeah, so it makes sense in South Park, right? Because I, they're I actually, exploiting I actually society. Picked up, I picked up a gift for someone I know, yeah. and it was that game. Nice. Yeah. I got him the Steelbook edition, which what? apparently... Where did you one, get that, by the way? One, did not know the price when I bought it until I rung, and it rang up. Was it more? Where did you buy it? That is a very expensive Steelbook, <laughs> Where did you buy it? Um, I wow. bought it at Best Buy. Oh, you did? Because, I mean, it was a gift, so I'm not going to be, like, super, like, picky and, and kind of cheap about, like, it. So I'm going to be like, I'll just get you something nice. Yeah. Steelbook. I mean, it's expensive. Um, and by expensive, I mean it's, like, $100. Whoa. But it comes with the game, it comes with the first game, and it comes with oh, the wow. expansion pack. Okay. Or the... the Okay. DLC thing. So, I mean, it's kind of justified. Because yeah. I got that, the first game with just my vanilla, actually. Yeah, that first game, you know, can drop the price, you know. That first game's price probably isn't worth, like, $20 yeah. or $15. It's probably more, like, 5 wow. to 10 Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. But, yeah, I mean, it's a decent steelbook. Like, nice. That's cool. I didn't want to spend the money. Steelbook. Yeah, yeah I probably, yeah. I'll upgrade once it, you know, once I can snipe it. It's nice got price. It's got uh, superhero Cartman on the front, and then Mysterio Butters on the back, so it's like oh. reversible and stuff too. Really wow. cool. Yeah, I cool. just hardcore. Again, I, this episode's been long, but I really would like to talk about like the gameplay, and I'll, I'd love to dig deep, even make comparisons yeah. to classic RPGs. Love it. <clears throat> love yeah. it. You mean like Final you? Fantasy, like those games Rogers buy? Yeah, yeah. How about those Final Fantasy? How 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 is fifteen? Yeah, I mean, you're playing the playing. Give it all us time. your review. Yeah. Um, Did you install it? I will say it was. Uh, <laughs> my review is that I got a really good deal on it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Uh, I got it used. Six out of five. <laughs> uh, I would get, yeah six out of five for used games. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> I have not played it yet. <laughs> uh, I have not installed it yet. I haven't even opened it. I'm sure you're rocking oh, something, though. So, oh, my God. You guys are going to totally hate me. Because the other game I bought, too, because this one was on sale, brand new, $15. Oh, no. It was at GameStop, actually. Uh, was uh, was Diablo 3 for the PS4. So I was like, holy what? crap. You didn't own that? Mm -mm. Oh, I own that. Oh, we could play together. Nice. Yeah, we could. I we should get that too. Together, yeah. I really would play Diablo with yeah? you guys. Oh my goodness! Oh. I still haven't installed. I never uninstalled it. I don't think. I think I did. It's like one of those. <laughs> what was it? Sixty before the DLC? Yeah. I actually. This had has 60. all the DLC too. This yeah, the, that's this right. is the Reaper of Souls or whatever. Oh it's called. yes, with Act Four for fifteen yeah. bucks. Yeah. that's a really good deal. Anyway, yeah, that so, game's always been a good deal. That's all. That's been a game that's filled with content like since day one. Yeah, like because I think PS4 always was Reaper of Souls. Souls. Edition. Oh, was it? Okay. So Good like point. then they then they like relaunched it. It's a there's a different edition of it, but it's basically Reaper of Souls with the like 3.0 patch or whatever that thing was. Yeah. But it was a free patch, so they kind of just repackaged it. Oh. And they call the Ultimate Edition. Then, yeah. Or something. Yeah. yeah. Well. I was excited. I haven't played that yet. And awesome. I uh, got Stardew Valley, which I haven't played yet. And I got... Uh, <laughs> oh, whoa. What are you I playing? I got Final Fantasy XV, which I haven't played yet. <laughs> um, we're trying to figure out... We were trying to figure out the other day who has the bigger Final Fantasy collection that we haven't touched the games in. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's Roger or I. I feel like I, it's Roger, but I, I have no, several. I, don't I think it's so. me. Really? I have 13, 13, 2. You've never played them? No. Uh, every what Final Fantasy all, what, I have, was I on the played Vita? Realm, was Realm Reborn. I have every Final Fantasy for PS3 and every variant. Okay, wow. yeah, he, uh, he, he beat Because I, I have, I had 13, but I played it. Lightning Returns. Yeah, 2, 3. Oh, I you have all those? those? Yeah. Oh, if you have more than the PS3 versions, then yeah, you got me beat for sure. 2, 3, no, because I played all the other ones. Oh, so you don't own them anymore. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah I... Uh... Like yeah, well, I, don't, I don't have that many. I, I I played them, but not the copies I have. I played them when they came out. Does that count? <laughs> but like no, not as then Rogers would count. Yeah. I'm not counting it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I have been playing, I've been playing uh, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon on the 3DS, which is a lot of fun. Way cool. Yeah. And then uh, no, 
Yes. It oh, is a I great don't... game. I'm yes. not a fan of that game. Oh, it's a fun game. Okay. Um, and then I started diving back into Super Metroid. Oh, yeah. That was a fun game. Oh, you're still doing the handhelds. Yeah. I don't know why I spite Wait, you for that. I should No, that's not a handheld. <laughs> Super Metroid, is that that remake one you bought? No. That's oh, Metroid I thought 2. you were talking oh. about the Sam Returns. No, Return of Samus. Yeah. yeah. Um, you finished that one? And what other games are I <laughs> Um, no, yeah, you know, yeah. So that's, oh, and then Cold Cup Revolt, I guess. I've been, oh, yeah. I've been playing that. That game is very addicting, so. Yeah. All right, let's uh, wrap this up and talk about how people can get a hold of us, starting you with you, Matt. You can find me on the Twitter at Matt Christian, M-A-T-C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, um, patreon.com slash games if you want to look up my jam game stuff. Um and Zimbiote on Steam or PlayStation or Xbox or I guess Wii U? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and Jake? Jake. Studley Omelette. Talking. <laughs> Not the talking part. <laughs> I mean, say, you can't st- type in Studley Omelette talking and you'll never find you. No, just Studley Omelette. Studley that's, Omelette. that's where you'll find me. Start Save Games on Instagram. I, yeah. I haven't really been posting lately, but I'll actually post... The f- the foreign imports that I got. Okay. I could just call them imports. It's kind of redundant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and Roger. You can get a hold of me uh, or us at Gamerheads PC on Twitter, uh, Gamerheads Podcast on uh, Facebook, or Gamerheads Podcast at gmail.com. Or, yeah, that's about it. All right. Oh, and then Rogue Leader 76 on PlayStation Network. Of him. course. Check out his trophies. Yes, true. He's <laughs> got them. I got them. He's got them. I got a lot of them. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. And for Jake and Matt and myself, thanks for listening. Gamerheads out. <laughs>